got nine people already, thanks to our our jazzy new intros. <laughs> well, how cool was that? Amazing. I felt like proper, like like I was proper, like in the in the limelight, and I was in like the proper show business there, where there was the big oh, countdown. On. That's incredible. <laughs> It's almost like I know what I'm doing, Jamie. <laughs> you do. You do. Listen, you're just like the rest of us, just making it up as you go along. We're kind just of just winging it through life. <laughs> so, welcome, viewers. Normally, I say welcome, Rebels and Rule Breakers, but for the first time ever tonight, we are going live on three different platforms at the same time. So not only are we in the Rebels and Rule Breakers Facebook group, we are also on my personal profile in Facebook and we are on my personal uh, page in LinkedIn as well. So we wanted to bring some of the, the Rebel juice out in further out into the world um compared to what we normally do. So already we've got some um some good um comments people saying hello hi lisa and lisa loving the countdown and so was nadia and um of course we have to introduce here um our fabulous guest for the evening which is jamie denya now you are not you are not a uh a novice when it comes to doing this live business are you jamie no, no, I've had I've had a little bit of past experience, you know. I've had, you know, there's a little bit of history there, you know, kind of being on camera or kind of using using my words in certain ways. So yeah, I've got a yeah. There's a little bit of uh, history there. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, some of you will know who Jamie is. Some of you will be unsure who Jamie is. And I am going to tell you, well, he's going to tell us who he is in a moment. So I'll give you sort of my intro for who Jamie is in my world. So um, those of you who are not members of the, the Rebels and Rule Breakers group um, may or may not be aware that I have a team of master rebels. And there are six of them and they're all amazing. And one of them is this man right here. And you've been a master rebel for a while. I'm going to get all into that sort of later. But actually bigger than that. Jamie, you do some amazing things out there um, in the world, and you are known as the speaking. Oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I say, um, you know, that's that's kind of one of the names. It's just kind of like a um, like a play on words, you know, because it's what I do, and I kind of because I'm because I've got like a lot of confidence in what in in what I do. I just kind of put the emphasis on like the word king, but you know, there's also like the grief preacher, which was a name that was given to me inside Park Prison Bridgend by one of the inmates. And, you know, I don't want to sound like some kind of benefit fraud that I'm going by all these different names, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, they were kind of given to me for a reason. Like I say, the, uh, the you know, that particular name, the grief preacher, which, which was given to me by an inmate and it kind of stuck. But I wasn't in there for doing anything sinister or naughty. You know, I was in there doing talks and uh, sessions with the inmates. And yeah, it's kind of stuck. So yeah, but I don't want anyone to think I'm some kind of benefit fraud, you know. <laughs> it would if you're on like a witness protection program they'd be like really showy names wouldn't they to, to new identities to go as <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely work, absolutely <laughs> go undercover like <laughs> not that under, undercover so let's get right stuck into this good evening charlotte as well oh. to you too um and tell us a little bit about you jamie give us a little bit of a potted history tell us how you've ended up in this position hit not i mean you know literally in your living room on my screen but where you are right now in your life how have you ended up there okay i suppose that when when i when i look back i mean it's it's one of those situations where i feel very very blessed uh at what I had and what I have. Um, but, you know, it's one of those that there's always a case of, you know, the trials and tribulations in which I faced, you know, because I, I had an amazing, amazing mum, like amazing, amazing two older sisters, you know, incredible. Like they were like the rocks in my life. But, you know, my dad left me when I was young. So, um, you know, I grew up in a very rough council estate, you know, but I had an unbelievable mum and unbelievable sisters. But, you know, I was in an environment where there were, 
you know, very, very negative influences because on this rough council estate, there was drug dealers, there was drug users. Um, you know, I, I was witness to domestic violence. You know, I saw uh, um, violence on a regular basis. You know, I, I had a ringside seat. You know, do you know what I mean? Like drug deals gone wrong. I saw two murders by the time I was like 13 years old. Drug deals gone wrong in broad daylight. Um, you know, so so there was a lot of a lot of negative influences. You know, I used to hang around with a lot older kids than me. Do you know what I mean? And I, I kind of like I, I experienced peer pressure from a very young age, but I think it's made me who I am today because I, I, I learned the power of the word no. You know, I, I, I could I could really distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. And it's kind of gone towards me being who I am and what I'm doing now. So, you know, I, I was very thankful for that for that upbringing, whether it was good, bad or indifferent. You know, I mean, I can I, I, I can't emphasize enough, you know, the amount of love and the amount of care and like compassion that I was shown by my mom and like my two sisters. So, you know, I, I had other unbelievable influences, positive influences in my in my life. Do you know, what I mean, like my nan was an incredible force of nature like my granddad was like a giant of a man um you know in more ways than one it wasn't just his height but like his heart and his and his stature and his you know his character do you know what i mean so these are the positive influences that i had um and also you know my you know my brother-in-law you know because because my sisters were 12 and 13 years older than me you know my my brother-in-law has been married to like my oldest sister you know they had been together since they were 12 and 13 so he he has known me my entire life and he's a very very strong you know good of character do you know what i mean uh, has 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 incredible morals you know he's a person that is has worked hard and has worked to get to where he is do you know what i mean so i had all those influences which is which i feel very very blessed for but you know on, on the other side of the coin you know i had all those other negative in, influences where drug dealers drug users um older um, older friends and peers you know putting like the peer pressure on me you know to do to do stuff but i had to stand my ground and and kind of say no in in that particular situation so it's gone a long way you know that was like unbelievable training and you know i i look i look back on my childhood you know with 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 unbelievable fond memories because I'm concentrating on the good, you know. I'm I'm very much like an '80s geek, do you know what I mean? And it's like I love the '80s films. I love like you know so much to do with the '80s, and like a lot of people could kind of say to me, well, listen, you're a, you're a child trapped in a man's body because I love all like the figures back from the eighties. Like I love the neck of figures that, that are out now, like really detailed figures. And it's like, I'm, I'm in a position now where I can give myself something that I've always dreamed of, which is my eighties room. Right. So that's, that's something that I've, um, you know, that I've worked towards in which I'm doing. So I'd literally said to my mum, um, you know, you know, not too long ago, um, mum, like I, I I, like I've just realized because I've gone back on this journey where I'm like researching, you know, all the stuff in which I was into and what I loved back in the 80s, I realized that there was not a toy that I did not have. And I want to thank you for that because I know that you put me first. Do you know what I mean? Like you sacrificed so much for me. Like you gave me so much. Thank you so much for that. So, you know, I, I, I'm I'm blessed in so many ways, which kind of you know, you know, has has helped me be the person that I am now and have the character in which I am now. So that 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 training helped me in so many different ways, you know. And when I kind of fast forward, you know, um, you know, through my life, do you know what I mean? Experiencing bullying and stuff like that and and growing up and having to move away and start up a business away from my family, being married, uh, going through a divorce, which was away from my family, um, moving to another area completely different, um, you know, again, um, being married again, going through another divorce. Do you know what I mean? Like this is all being away from my family but even though I've been away from my family I've kind of really drawn on on the lessons of my family which they carry on giving me like so many so many kind of um you know, you know lessons and inspirations with what they do and they always inspire and motivate me from afar and kind of like vice versa so when I look at all these things um you know when when I look at you know a change of environment like a change um in like logistics like where i'm living what i'm doing like with with without my family around me um you know i i realized that i've faced so much alone where i've gone through divorces alone where i've had to relocate alone i've had to pack up my house and i've had to move alone and and it's like you know although it's it was traumatic 
it's one of those things that I feel thankful for now because I realize what I can do on my own. And no matter what books you read, no matter what advice you take, no matter what programs you're on, there's only one thing, right? There's only one thing that can teach you and show you what you can do alone. And that's why you actually doing it and facing it and overcoming it alone. So like, I'm thankful for these situations. I'm not saying that I'm bulletproof. I'm not saying that I'm bombproof and that I'm exempt from life's tests and trials, but I, 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 I have my blips. I go through, you know, I have to go over my hurdles. You know, I'm not perfect, but I still draw draw on those um, inspirations and they served me well. You know, like I say, relocation, divorce and all that. And, you know, and then like levels go up, levels go up. And, you know, there's things that happen in your life where you literally have a choice of whether this makes you or whether this breaks you. There's no in between. And that happened to me back in 2012 when my 19 year old nephew was murdered by a 14 year old boy. And that there gave me a choice of whether this literally makes you or whether this breaks you, James. And again, you know, I was living away from my family. You know, I wasn't around my family at that time. And I've had to, you, you know, when that happened, I had my beautiful curly hair princess Tilly, like she was three months old, like when this happened. So, you know, I, I, I was away and, and I had responsibilities. And, you know, there were times where I just wanted to stay in bed. Do you know what I mean? But, Tilly needed feeding, like Tilly needed cuddles during the night. Tilly needed to wake up in the morning and and she 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 dragged me through, like she pulled me through. You know, I didn't want to do it, but you know, I had to do it. And now I look back and it's what I truly needed. And I realize what I can do and what I can get up and face like during during um each and every day. So, you know, I I I decided that after a little, after a little time in the darkness, I got a reminder. I got a reminder like that it, it, it was it was it was unreal it was unreal so going back like my nephew's life was taken and it was one of those that his 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 examples like his behavior has has motivated me like more than I can explain and it's when we take excuses out of the game the game changes because I will deal with reasons and excuses. Give me a good reason as to why you can't do something that I'll listen to you all day long, but don't go give me excuses. And I was, I was shown that I was shown that like it, it, it was, it was unreal. So my nephew's life was taken and th this is the kind of inspiration that I have to follow because Connor, his, his life was taken two days after his life was taken. He had saved five people's lives with his organs, right? His heart couldn't be used because it was too traumatized. But what could be used were his heart valves. His heart valves were put into storage. Um, seven months later, we got the news. Like seven months later, when I was in the darkness, like when I was in the pit, it was like we then got the news that one of his heart valves saved the life of a 10-month-old baby girl. And my beautiful curly hair princess Tilly was 10 months old at that time. So I knew what it was like to be the dad of a 10 month old baby girl, like how much of a blessing and a privilege that was. And that there was the excuse, like that there was the excuse taken away. It was as if Connor was saying to me, listen, listen, I'm, like, I, I'm, I'm not even here. I'm not even here. Like I'm not even walking the earth and I'm still saving people's lives. Like, listen, I know you're broke, but not broken. I know you're down, but you're not out. What's, what's your excuse? Huh? Why, why can't you use your God given talent by going out there and helping people? And that's, this, this, let's go. So then that's when the excuse was taken away from me, for me to decide that I would like to use my words in the best possible way to become the grief preacher, to become the speaking, to go out there and help people with my words and my life experience, taking my life experiences and my past to help people with their life experiences of their present so they can have better life experiences in their future. Like that's all I can do. And then like literally four months later we then got the news that he saved like the life of a five-year-old boy with his other heart valve so again it just gave me that little bit of like a push to carry on going yet yeah, to keep on knocking on these doors to keep on uh, um you know uh, to keep on track to to doing what it is that i do it to, to what it is that I do and what it is that I'm doing. Because at the end of the day, listen, this wasn't this wasn't handed to me. Like I'm doing something that so many people would love to be doing. Like 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 going out there and and um listen, speaking in front of crowds and getting paid for it and getting a fee and getting your 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 um you know accommodation paid for and your expenses. Listen, that's what a lot of people would love to be doing at this particular time. But I was met with a lot of resistance. So I had to keep on saying, listen, this is who I am, this is what I do this is my message like and and i will even do it for free and so many people were saying listen don't ever contact this place again you know don't even ever uh, um you know, you know make this offer again 
But now, because I haven't taken it personal, those same people are literally coming to me saying, yeah, can you come in and do a talk? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I'm saying, yeah, but, you know, I was offering it for free back then. But now there's a fee to be paid because of who I am and what I do. And this is now, you know, a very, very big part of my life. And, right. you know, it's, it's then kind of like it, it, everything that I went through in 2012 helped me in 2020. And that's when, you know, during the first big lockdown, you know, the youngest of my two older sisters took her own life during lockdown. So, again, you know, the family was absolutely devastated, torn apart. But yeah. I, I, I yeah, listen, baby, baby brother was was heartbroken. Right? Baby brother was devastated, shattered. Like there's so many thoughts went through my head. But then I remembered, listen, I, listen, I've been through Connor. Like I've been through, like I've got through Connor. Let, think, of, think of the lessons that Connor has shown me. Like, to, listen, to carry on going, like you've you've got to keep on going. And then that allowed me to take a phone call literally three days after my sister took her own life from a young 22-year-old single mum who was thinking about doing exactly the same thing. And it's one of those that, um, you know, I, I, I had the strength to talk her down, to make her see clarity, to make her see sense, um, because her partner had literally died unexpectedly and suddenly five months prior. And, you know, they, they had a five year old daughter there and she was thinking about doing exactly the same thing. But, you know, it, it, it's one of those that I'm, uh, you, know, you know, I played a big part in in her. Um, mm. Listen, see, seeing things for what they were, talking yeah. her down, make her see clarity, make her see sense with a little bit of aftercare and coaching as well. She's now doing some amazing things, you know, in the mental health game. So, yeah, that's 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 kind of me in a nutshell. I mean, there's there's a lot that's been left out, but those are the big things. And, you know, it's something that, you know, I look back on and think, yeah, listen, I've got to give myself a little bit of a pat on the back because there's so many things that have happened to me, like, uh, um, in a short space of time that people will say, listen, they're the most, they're the most kind of uh, uh, pressurised uh, situations that you can be in. Listen, the most traumatic and trialsome uh, situations that you can be in. Moving, death, divorce. And I've literally done so many in in, in such a short space of time. And um, yeah, I'm, you know, I give myself a pat on the back, but that's just like a little bit of the background that's made me who I am and kind of what I'm doing right here, right now. Thank you, Jamie. That's uh, that. I know that is a potted history, but it's it's already like given us, you know, 18 minutes of good juice because there's that, so much to talk about. And I know we can only ever scratch the surface with 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 you. Um, Lisa's put in uh, commenting about how that you do you you do more than just stand up and talk. You inspire people. You help them push through their obstacles, and and build a, a much better future for themselves. So tell us a little bit more um, about just briefly, sort of give us a um, you know sort of almost elevator pitch, I guess, of what you do uh, in terms of this, the the speaking work that you do, who you do it with, and what kind of things you talk to them about. Yeah, I'm I'm very, very proud and privileged and like blessed, you know, to be able to go into schools and we're talking primary and comprehensive uh, colleges, universities, youth offender institutes, prisons. You know, I go and speak to, um, you know, you know, sports teams. I, I've I've even gone into gypsy traveler community sites. Do you know what I mean? And it's like I will then go and speak in the corporate world. And and it's one of those that it doesn't matter who it is that I speak to. Like the message is louder than clear, like the message still resonates because at the end of the day, um, listen, we're all human beings. So it doesn't matter what part we're on it doesn't matter whether you're a premiership player it doesn't matter whether you're a prisoner or whether you're a pupil it's it, it's one of those that listen it still stands it still stands because whether you know your goal and your objective is to get out of prison and to stay out listen what are you going to need like you're going to need to kind of uh, uh withstand temptation like you're going to need uh a, listen uh, to put in hard work you're going to need resilience you know you, listen your mental health is going to be kind of um uh impacted and tested if, if you're a pupil and you're going towards exams and stuff like that, listen, it's exactly the same. If you're a premiership footballer, like I've spoken to premiership footballers who get paid obscene amounts of money, who they've got like the Lamborghinis and the Bugatti Veyrons and the Ferraris in the car park, they're getting paid 150 to 200,000 pounds per week and they've got 60 to 70,000 adoring fans kind of screaming their name and then all of a sudden like they say that sometimes I don't want to step across that white line. I don't want to step across that white line onto, onto the pitch because of things that are happening in their life. Why because they're human beings the money doesn't protect you like the adulation doesn't protect you the fame and the fortune it doesn't protect you so that's why that when i go into the corporate world and sometimes listen i can i can 
listen, I have spoken at like multi-million pound kind of corporate events where like the people that have put on the events are multi-millionaires. And it's like, you know, they'll be wearing like the Armani suits and the Patrick Cox shoes. The women will be wearing the Coco Chanel dresses and the Jimmy Choo shoes. And then all of a sudden in Iraq, in my cap and my hoodie and my Jordans, and they think as he comes to speak or rob the place, like I'm not too sure. And they might think that I'm a little bit of a joke at first, but then I start speaking. I understand that I'm the real deal and I've got a very worthwhile and valuable message in which to give. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I, I, I'm... I'm I am literally worthy of being there because what I say resonates because because I'm bringing it from a place of experience and I've experienced it because I'm a human being and I know that you've experienced it because you're a human being so I can take this in to kind of like really really uh, um, look at the mental health aspect overcoming grief, resilience, listen, uncomfortable truths, listen, all this stuff that we face and and this is the thing right this is this is what. I'm kind of dealing with in today's day and age. Now, I look back to when I was younger, our natural resilience, because 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 I take because I take my 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 inspirations from the older generation. Do you know what I mean? Like my great nan, my great granddad, my nan, my granddad. And and I look at that stuff that they worked through like so much. They worked through so much. So that's where I'm very much old school in like my morals and my values and kind of my mindset and resilience. So my natural kind of resilience is there and life's tests and trials were there so it's like an even fight but i would say now like i wouldn't be a teenager in today's day and age for love nor money because of no, the heightened pressure the heightened pressure in which we have yeah. so there's 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 so much listen i got bullied when i was young but but i know or I knew that when I went through the school gates, you know, at the end of the day, I would have the evening off. Now, because of social media, now because of technology, like people are being bullied like 24 seven and it's relentless, do you know what I mean? And, and it's and it's more savage and severe. So there's so much more because now we're comparing our lives more than ever to other people. So it kind of chips away at our self-confidence, our self-worth and our value because we're comparing ourselves to other people and we're comparing our behind the scenes and our outtakes and our bloopers to other people's blockbuster trailer. Do you know what I mean? Like that's what we're doing on like they social media. They can't beat this though tonight, can they, Jamie? This All production like value. The and the mirrors and how many <laughs> films have you seen where you look at the trailer and you think to yourself, man, I've got to see this film like mm -hmm. pronto i've got to see it lively because this looks proper lit and then you go and see the film and you realize that the rest of the film don't live up to the hype like they've shown all the, all the best stuff in like the trailer and that's what yeah. so many people are doing so that's what like, we do on so social media people... though isn't it as well we show all the best stuff that we put in a trailer about our lives yeah. We don't show the crappy stuff or the boring stuff. Or, no, 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 and, and that's and that's you know, the realness, right? and that's what we're that's what that's what that's what we need to deal with. That's what we need to deal with because there's no that's a, that's the foundational work end because there's no there's no use there's no use building a beautiful house with the highest spec materials with all the top chrome and marble kind of furnishings and finishings if you have not dug strong yeah. enough foundations. Like six months, that house is going to collapse. So mm -hmm. with with all this stuff that we're dealing with, with height and pressure, we've now, because out of a time of abundance and being spoiled, listen, I know that there's poverty. I know there's poverty around and I know that there are people struggling to eat. But on the other side of the coin, I also know that for a very, very uh, a reasonable amount of money, people can go into a place and eat until their stomachs nearly burst. Right. So. Like there's there's so much. Listen, there's answers. There's 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 mm. information at the end of our fingertips. So there's this heightened pressure, but there is a lower natural resilience than what there was. That there's the problem in which we're dealing with now. So yeah. I can't take away the pressures. I can't take away them. So what I look at is dealing with bringing up your natural resilience. Like, right. like listen, I can't do anything about the pressure that's there right that's going to be there regardless so let's get it right let's get it straight on yeah. what's needed to hit it head on so that's why mm. i deal with like the grief aspect um the you know you know the mental health aspect the resilience mm. listen this, this, uh, and the uncomfortable truths of what's needed to lay these foundations on which to build your hopes and your dreams and your ambitions on brilliant answer well that was the brief answer folks i don't know what the long answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. listen, that was that was that was very, very I mean, short and no. sharp. Short and this, sharp. There was no detours on that. <laughs> this is um, I mean, those of you who are if this is your first experience of Jamie will be thinking, wow, that guy's gonna be exhausted after this. But let me tell you, 
this is the fire that Jamie brings in every scenario, right? And I can vouch for that because um, he, as I said earlier, is a member of my Mass Rebel team. And even when we're having small team conversations and nobody's there to watch, this is the level of fire that Jamie brings all the time. And before we go any further, if people are thinking, well, actually, we need a piece of Jamie in our school or prison or organisation or whatever it is, um, where, how can people get hold of you if they're interested in having you do a bit of a speaking gig for them? Right. So first and foremost, the website, www.jamiedenyer, that's D-E-N-Y-E-R.com. On Instagram, on social media, uh, at grief preacher or one word listen you can drop me a message on my website you can drop me a message um or like a follow on instagram like i say i i, I do i do a lot of mo motivational stuff on there as well little snippets um so so yeah so you can get a little dose of me you know whichever but yeah listen in person is where i thrive like that's yeah. where you know that's what i love and listen i'm used to doing five one hour talks in a day and trust me like the last five minutes of the fifth talk will have as much energy as much fire as much passion as oh, kind yeah. of the you know the first five minutes of like the first talk so you know i i'd, I'd literally do that standard and and, you know, I've been known to do that four days on the trot as well. Do you know what I mean? Traveling the country on like two, three hours sleep where I've had to get from one end of the country to the other. And I've literally driven for a couple of hours, pulled over into a service station, uh, slept for an hour, another two hours uh, driving, slept for another hour and then get there to the college or the university. Do you know what I mean? Bright and early where I'm ready to go again. So, yeah, I, that, that's that's just standard for me. I don't know how you do it, Jamie. I really don't. Yeah, will one of my Master Rebels, Nadia, Lisa, perhaps put one of those um, website addressing, addresses in the comments for me, please, and then I can pop it up on the screen because I can't do it from here just to make sure it shows uh, for people if they're looking. Um, thank you, guys. Um, so um, let, let's talk about the whole Master Rebel thing then, Jamie. So um, I um, I followed you for a while on LinkedIn and so on and watched what you were doing and I saw your Monday motivations and all of those great things that you do. And um, then I interviewed you a while back. In fact, it was pretty much exactly a year ago that I did one yeah. of these with you. Um, and uh, Nadia's saying, repeat the website. So it's www.jamiedenya.com, was yep. it? Yep. Yep, that's yeah, that's Fabulous. Um, so, yeah, so I followed you for a bit. We did an interview with you. That went down brilliantly. Um, and um, you were a member of the rebel community at that point. And um, I then thought, you know what? Actually, this is the kind of person we need on the team. What he does in the world is really unique and really, really brave. And he absolutely, uh, thank you guys for doing that, um, absolutely models um, what, you know, what we believe in here. So I invited you to be a master rebel. So talk to us a little bit about what being a master rebel means for you and why you're part of this community in general. Well, first and foremost, I kind of choose who, who I give my time to and like who I'm around. So the fact that you asked me, because I know like what you stand for, who you are as a person, what your intentions are, what your morals are, you know, what you're about. Um, that was a big thing. So, yeah, to be asked to be part of this group, um, yeah, to, to be able to just literally to give any value that I can at any given moment in any given situation, but also to come here to learn, you know, because it's one of those things that what makes me you know, the speaker that I am is because I'm a really good listener as well. I like to listen to people, you know, whenever I go and do a talk in like a comprehensive school or a college or university, like I, I, I say to the students, listen, I would love to be in a room, just you and me, like for 10 minutes, I would literally speak to you for like 30 seconds and I'd want you to speak to me for nine and a half minutes because I know that there's something that you've got. There's 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 something that you've been through. There's something that you've experienced. There's something in life that you've that you've hit head on, that you've experienced that I haven't. And you can help me like you can literally teach me. So let's go. So I, I, I'm. You know, I, I'm I'm kind of humble enough and truthful enough to know that I still need to learn. Like I'm work in progress. I I I I need to learn things and I need to experience things. And this is something that happened to me. Like when when I was in a comprehensive school once and I was doing like five one hour talks. After after like 
the second talk, I can always remember like the student come, coming up to me like afterwards during a break. And he said, like, you seem to have life sussed. And I'm like, whoa, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Like, I think I've got about 5% of it sussed. The other 95% of it, I'm learning as I'm going along. I'm blagging it. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing the best I can. That, though, when you can get up and do your thing, people assume that you've like got your shit going on, don't they? Yeah, that's right. And and I want people to know that like a lot of the time, right? Do you know when I do you know when I do a talk, right? Because there's things that happen to me. And trust me, do you know when you're out there doing good things, positive things, productive things, you seem to be under more of a more of like an attack. Do you know what I mean? Like you seem mm. to be under more pressure and like the test and the trial seem seem to come. So I say to whoever it is I'm speaking to, listen. I'm going through something right now. Like I'm, listen, I'm experiencing it because life is the storm. You're either going towards a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out the other side of a storm. Like it, it's that's that's all it is. And at any given moment, like I know, like the time in between each one is kind of like a uh, uh, different, you know, for 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 like different people and the severity and um, you know the savageness of kind of like each storm is different. But you know, I I'm I'm saying, listen, I go through this stuff. I'm going through this stuff. I've had to get up. I've I've had to be here today. And sometimes, even though that I'm I, I'm doing something that I feel that I was born to do, that I was put on this earth to do, and I'm fulfilling my destiny, and I'm doing something that is literally my purpose in life, I still have to do it through gritted teeth sometimes. And the words in which I'm saying to you, guess what? My ears are open because I'm listening to what I'm saying because Jamie Denyer needs to listen to Jamie Denyer at this particular time. Like I need to take my own words in, practice what I preach and kind of live by the words in which I in which I speak. So yeah, I I, I certainly haven't got life sus and it doesn't make me exempt. It doesn't make me bulletproof. And I just want everybody to know that we are literally in this together. So if there's someone standing in front of you, like literally giving you words of wisdom, that's talking like about their past experiences that are doing something that other people would would love to do and dream about don't go thinking that they've got everything sussed mm. listen we are human beings no one is exempt we are in this together whether that be like uh you know a trench in which we're in listen we, we, we uh, or 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 a load of joy a test a trial and have you ever heard that the um you know the saying that we're in the same boat we're in mm -hmm. the same boat listen listen it's completely wrong it's completely wrong listen we are not in the same boat in this life. Listen, we are in the same storm. It's just that some people are on an all-inclusive kind of like yacht, like top of the range yacht. There are people that are on a cruise liner. There are some people that are on a speedboat. There's some people on a jet ski. There's some people on a dinghy. There are some people on a lilo. And there are some people that are literally hanging on to a piece of driftwood. So we are in the same storm. We're, listen, we're not in the same boat, but yeah, definitely the same storm. And I need people to know that whatever walk of life we are in whatever like whatever it is we're experiencing like what what whatever test or trial we're going up against at that particular time no matter what situation or circumstance or environment in which we're in this we we, we all experience it right and it hits us but like i say our own journey our own test and trial our own situational circumstance our own environment will indeed be different to other people other people are more privileged other people are more are more blessed are more comfortable are are, are in a different place to us but mm. it doesn't mean to say that they are not in a storm the, the, listen the waters are still rough some are in the cruise liner like i say some are in a yacht some are in a speedboat some are in a jet ski some are in a dinghy some's on a lilo and some people are hanging on to a bit of driftwood but we are all in this same storm so yeah don't go thinking that everybody's got it sussed no matter what kind of vision they throw out there or what true that right. true that now we've got a question from lisa avins our uh one of our other master rebels and feel free guys to chuck in your questions and we'll we'll do whatever we've got time for i've still got loads of questions left to ask i don't know if we're going to cover them all but um lisa's question jamie for you is how do you take care of your own mental health how do I take care of my own is, is I know when to pull back. Like, I'm not someone that's continuously on social media. Like, I put stuff out there to help, but I know when to step back from social media. I know when to come away from it because I'm not going on there listening to people gossip. Like, I'm not going on there to wear my dirty laundry. Like, I'm not going on there to do this stuff. I only ever go on there to, 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 to inform, to 
educate, to tell people stuff. So, um, you know, I do it for a very positive and productive reason, but yet I still know the like the risks of it. Like I still know that it's a very toxic place and that it can overtake us. So I step away. Like I know where my sanctuaries are. Like I know what my blessings are. I know that if I'm feeling the heat, if I'm feeling the pressure, that I need to go down by the sea. Do you know what I mean? Like that's my sanctuary. I love that place. Like I did, like the sea, like calms me. Like it's it's just an amazing, amazing place for me. Like. I know what to do. I know who to be around. I know where to cut stuff off. I know what not to do. I know to put my phone down. I know to kind of not get involved with certain things. So there's a lot of stuff that I do, that I do do to actually look after my own mental health. But again, it's not foolproof. It's not, it's not, it's not perfect. And we all go through tests and trials. So yeah, I can, I can only do what I can because, you know, it's one of those that, uh, listen nothing is foolproof and there is nothing that i'm telling you listen there, there are things in life that it doesn't matter how much you meditate that it doesn't matter how many incense sticks you 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 kind of burn how much sage you kind of put put on the listen put on, put on the burner and there are things where you just have to go back tell to you're the a old big stage school burner, resilience <laughs> and that is it. Grit your teeth and get through it. That That's it. It's yeah. just endure. It doesn't matter. Like You will feel like that you are in the fire. You will feel like you're in the darkness. You will feel like that you're under pressure. But then you realize that that's the whole process of a diamond becoming a diamond. Like It's literally, it doesn't start off its life as a diamond. But if anyone wants to become a diamond, you've got to go through the process of becoming it. So when you're dug out of like the darkness, that's what a diamond does. It's like a black rock. It gets dug out of the earth. Uh, it gets dug out of the earth. Then severe pressure. Pressure is applied to it for, for all the loose debris to come away. Then severe heat is applied to it to flush out all the impurities and toxins. And then it's cut into shape. So when you look at those words, there's some darkness, um, pressure, heat, cut, right? They're not very glamorous words, but those are the process to becoming a diamond. And when you do become a diamond, nothing can break you, right? There are things out there that look like a diamond, but trust me, if they was put under pressure, they would just shatter and they would break because they're actual glass. They look the same, but they're not the same. A diamond has been through it but sometimes the diamond will get thrown in the dirt and it will get thrown into thrown into horrible situations and it doesn't matter but it will always be a diamond so that's us listen we're all different we're all different in 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 so many different ways but once you go through all this stuff yes it does toughen you but it doesn't make you exempt from life tests and trials but being a diamond and still dealing with life tests and trials is a lot better than being just like a glass imitation and shattering under the pressure so a lot of people may feel sometimes that they've been that they've been buried under life tests and trials and what they have to understand is is you've been planted you haven't been buried you've been planted to grow into something more extraordinary do you know what i mean we have to have a little bit of time like in the darkness that. in order to blossom and flourish so yeah that's um you know like no, that. that's that's how i look after myself but like i say I, there's no foolproof plan mm -hmm. out there because life no, when you think you've true. got something sus you've got something cracked life says mm, hang on a minute hold my beer Hold my beer. That's it. I'm, you know, I'm coming again now. So yeah, I'm gonna see what happens. else I can give you. Yep, too right. So Jamie, one of the things that I, you, particularly when you did your, you know, your sort of potted history bit before, one of the things that always strikes me with you is that you are not afraid to challenge the status quo. Shall we say? Anyone who takes a look at Jamie's Facebook page, for example, will absolutely see that. My love, you, you are. The, the person who will, you know, absolutely challenge the stuff that's going on in the world that shouldn't. You're very um, prepared to speak about some very bold topics. You're quite edgy with how you do that. And some sometimes very difficult topics as well. Yeah. And I'm just sort of, I know when you were younger, you had, um, you know, there was a lot of temptation around you because of the environment you were in. Um, you know, gang culture, drug culture, all of that kind of stuff. And you must have had incredible inner strength somehow that helped you stay outside of all of that, where every circumstance was trying to get you in it, probably, by the sounds yeah. of it. Um, and I'm sure you must get yourself in trouble a little bit here and there in life um, with some of the things that you're prepared to tackle. So yeah, I'm just yeah. kind of wondering a little bit more about that. You know, where does that come from? Why are you so prepared to stay there out on the edge in a place that's actually really quite difficult to do? And I know that on a, you know, perhaps yeah. softer scale than 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 what you do. But 
yeah t tell us more about that Where simply that because be? you, listen i've listen i've spent my time in facebook jail do you know what i mean and, and that's kind of an <laughs> yeah. indication i think to people who, who are kind of doing something right nowadays because <laughs> It just seems that so many people want to be comforted by a liar. You know, they would rather live in an uncomfortable, like a comfortable lie, as opposed to being challenged by a comfortable truth. And this is this is the thing. The reason that I'm prepared to do all this is because I know this stuff's happening. Like I know this stuff's happening. Listen, I, I, listen, I'm dealing with babies. Like I'm dealing with these youngsters who are being abused, who are being tortured, who are being neglected, who are being hurt, who are being abused. Like I could say, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically, sexually. Listen, th th these things are happening. Like, and 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 I'm not burying my head in the sand pretending that this stuff isn't happening. Because listen, no matter what you do, as a manipulator, as a controller, as someone that wants to get get away with a, a negative or sinister or, or insidious actions or behavior you don't want anyone questioning anything and that seems to be life in general and if anything like if anything has taught me like the past two years has told me has literally shown me because i'm very, very uh, i'm very interested in human behavior like i'm very much yeah. interested in the social sciences and like the psychology but guess what i've also got a hell of a lot of common sense and common sense has got me through like you wouldn't believe like especially these last couple of years where i'm just prepared to connect the dots and take little bits and like a lot of people said to me jane you would have made an incredible barrister because it's like you look at this kind of like like this little bit of evidence where this tiny little thing here like listen that's the key to it all one lump of leaven leaven yeah. the entire lump one drop of cyanide poisons the whole liter of water so that's that's what i'm saying that little light there that little manipulation there that little bit of like nastiness and insidiousness there listen that, that that's that's shown me all i need to know so listen if i've got the ability and the capability to speak out about it then i've that listen I, I i think myself then i've damn well got the responsibility to kind of speak out because there are little ones like there are people that haven't got a voice there are people that are being hurt that are being put through all this stuff that that that, that, that don't know they may not have the courage they may not they may not uh, have 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 certain amount of intellect. Like they may listen. I am not claiming to be to be uh, uh, you know unbelievably clever or have a high high IQ. Like I say, like a lot of common sense. But there may be people that are dealing with certain things and they haven't got the voice. Like they may be doing it through fear. And I have this responsibility to speak. Listen, when I've gone into a prison, right, and I've spoken to prisoners, right, and I bring the story. I bring the story of my nephew's life being taken by violence, and. I've seen what it does to a family. I've seen how it tears people apart. Like my sister and brother-in-law, they were together since they were 12 and 13. They married when they were 19 and 20. Like they've been together, like their first ever love, like the, the, listen, comprehensive school sweethearts. They were within a cat's whisker of breaking up after all this had happened. My brother's 1.4 million turnover a year business, 30 employees, 11 vehicles out on the road. Like that went bust for after four months because my brother-in-law couldn't function as a human being, being like the business went under. All those people were made redundant. Like they had to sell their car, like an 80,000 pound car for 16 grand as like, as a quick sale to just buy a cheap little runaround, but to keep the roof over their head. Like I've seen this happen. So when I'm going in and I'm speaking to these prisoners, like I'm not just bringing the fire for Connor Saunders. Like I'm not just bringing the fire for my family. I'm going in there and I'm speaking to each one of those prisoners for every mum, dad, daughter, a son, uncle, auntie, cousin, brother, sister, niece, nephew, every single one that can't go in and tell their life destroyers what they think about them. Do you know what I mean? So this this isn't this isn't normal. Like it, it, it just seems standard for me. Stand for me yeah. for doing what's right. So I don't think that I'm doing anything malicious. Like I'm not doing anything rebellious because I'm only asking questions about certain things where I can see evidence for and I'm connecting the dots and I'm using my common sense for. I'm literally asking like things that other people wouldn't. And this is what this this is what gets me, Em, is because like I know you said um like you know, you know, one of these things about you know the stuff in which you say that you might consider rebellious. Like I I don't think that I'm rebellious. Like I'm just asking what I think is standard. Like if I can take or or, or um like a particular example, like what's happened recently, right? So I I don't see this as rebellious, right? But I know for a fact, because of the work in which I do, the babies in which I deal with, like we're talking about these little primary school kids that may be going through neglect and may be going through uh, um, 
various forms of abuse. Like I know this happens, right? So the people in which I'm working with now, like I'm, listen, I'm hearing stuff and I know stuff now and I'm finding out stuff now about child trafficking. Do you know what I mean? Like this, this is what people are doing. Like this, this is what's happening. It's the second most lucrative kind of, I don't want to give it this label, but business like or, or, or money gain on the planet behind arms. It's overtaken drugs, right? So kids, this is this is this is what's happening. So so when I'm dealing with this, right? So I know that in it, like not too long ago, that there, there was literally a man and a woman, like they were partners, and they have been convicted. Listen, beyond any shadow of a doubt, listen, it, it's it's not even in question that they were abusing children themselves. But they were also, because of the circles in which they run in, the people that, way, that they were connected to, they were getting children and selling these children and supplying these children to friends, right? Child trafficking. So we're talking about Jeffrey Epstein and just like Maxwell, right? So what we got with uh, just, well, <laughs> Jeffrey just so happens to be passed now and no one saw it happen. The cameras didn't work and the guards were asleep. Um, but now, I mean, with like just like Maxwell, with this particular uh, uh, um trial that's all we got was sketches now we've got the full soap opera of what's going on between johnny depp and like amber heard like the, the, the full blow by blow account that's all i'm saying is this woman was convicted right okay listen that's good i'm pleased she was in a court of law and i'm pleased that she's been exposed but how about this how about the little bit of evidence i, I don't i don't care about her tell me your customers i want to know the names of who you supply children to I want to know the names of who you've given children over willingly to be raped, to be murdered, to be tortured, to be abused, to be sacrificed in whatever way. Those, those, that's, that's what I want to know. And, and, and why is no one? This, this is what gets me. Is, is why is no one shouting this from the rooftop? Everyone will put why, on social media you about nailing it? their colours to the mask, about what team they're on, Team Johnny or Team Amber, like what's, what's going on. Listen, I, mm. I couldn't care enough. I, I couldn't care any less about either one of them because that man's name was on the Lolita Express. Don't worry about that. I don't care about either of them cretins. But at the end of the day, why, why, why are people not shouting from the rooftops This like the lowest of the low? Like, if my mum found out that I was a drug dealer, that I was an arms dealer, that I was a fraud, that I was a money lawn, 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 drug, you know, bad enough. But trust me, the lowest of the low, trading children, that, that, that's, listen, you can't get any more evil or more sinister than that. So why, that's, that's from my point of view, is why are people not saying more about it? Why are they not? kind of like oh, more more up in arms about it, maybe mm. because it's too uncomfortable and people want to well, be comforted think, by a lie right and put there. their head I in the sand and pretend it's not happening. I think it is a, a massive discomfort area for people, isn't it? So and that's why it's up to people like also, me to do it. That's why it's up to people yeah, like me to do it, because, it, because I feel it's been bestowed upon me. And why? Because I'm comfortable enough and I'm strong enough to kind of deal with any backlash, mm. to deal with anything that's thrown my way. And that's something that I that I learned from like my TEDx talk, like when, when I spoke about my nephew, like I learned a lot from doing that particular talk because like there were comments on there that when you do a TEDx talk, you all of a sudden go onto the TEDx like YouTube channel. So you're open, like it's open season for the comments yeah. in which you get, right? So there are comments on there and you can go on and see them and there's uh, people saying that this is the best TED talk that I've seen. You're the best speaker that I've seen. Who is this guy? He's giving me goosebumps. This message has come at the right time. Like I lost my sister and I lost my brother and this has helped me overcome it, blah, blah, blah. And and then, you know, that, like the other side of the coin is, you know, that there's this, that, that there was a comment that kind of really struck me, like when it come through, because when I do a presentation, like I show a, a particular picture of my nephew, Connor, where it was taken, the last ever picture taken of him seven hours before his life was taken, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, th this comment kind of connected that to that one. picture. And it literally said, anyone with that haircut deserves to be punched in the face. And if a 14-year-old can kill you with a single punch, then you deserve to die. That there wow. was a comment that I took that. It hurt me for about five seconds. But then I said so. I took a deep breath and I said something. And this is what I say to people. What do, what do, what do you say to people if they give you a gift? Hopefully it's thank you, because that's what I said to this person. Thank you, because what you don't understand is now you've poured fuel on the fire for me to go out and inspire another yeah. thousand schools, another thousand universities, another thousand colleges. Like, I'm not getting mixed up in the best speaker that I've seen. This is the best TED talk that I've seen. This is this stuff and that. 
that there, the negative is what is what motivates me, and that's what makes me the beast in which I am in what I do. That's what that's what separates like like different stuff like i know that there are people out there that give themselves certain labels there are people out there that call themselves the uk's number one motivational speaker i blow the man to pieces he wouldn't want to go up against the preacher for an hour he wouldn't want to go up against me for two hours he wouldn't want to go up against me for three hours non-stop like a machine gun boom like where it's just literally sweat you'll see the veins in my neck you'll see the blood pumping boom yeah. Even literally blood sweat and tears but that's the difference is so many people will do what it is they're doing just to get like adulation to get praise i i listen i am the other side of the coin like like give me something negative give me something horrible and and i will turn that into something like i will turn that negative into Mm. a positive and i will turn those hurtful words into something else which then gives me the right to stand in front of youngsters in a school and say guess what in today's day and age in which we live in you will get abuse you will get hostility you will get vitriol you will get negativity especially on social media and if it's telling you that you're a mistake if it's telling you that you're better off dead if it's telling you that you should kill yourself if it's telling you that you're ugly that you're fat that you're a mess that like that if you bring the rope i will bring the chair and i will help you do it and all this stuff. if they're telling you this stuff just take a deep breath let it hurt you for five seconds and then say do you know what thank you because you want me out of this world mm. like you want me gone i'm gonna prove to you that this world is gonna be a better place with me in it like I, i'm and and that's why i say to people listen if you're different it's good because people will challenge you for being different. But it's only when you're different, you can make a difference in this world. So be so 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 be thankful for that. Embrace it. But trust me, listen, it's good. It's good that we say, listen, for the negatives that happen, we can take a positive. But you've got to understand that energy goes both ways. And with anything that's positive, there will be negatives that you have to come up against and you have to overcome and conquer. So, yeah, it, it just gives me the right that, again, I was thankful to that comment because I can literally show I can literally show yeah. evidence, which is what I'm kind of like big on, that I can show evidence that no matter whether you're trying to do something positive, productive, well-meaning, helpful, supportive, and you're speaking from the heart, you've got your heart on the sleeve and you're, and you're talking about a very, very emotive subject, that even then people mm-hmm. will bring the fire to you and they will try and bring you down. Uh, if it happens to me, then it'll happen to you. But you can do exactly the same as me because there's nothing special about me deep breath let it hurt you for five seconds and then say do you know what i'm going to prove you wrong amazing well we've only we've got a few minutes left jamie and i want to um i want to ask you so you you know you've sort of said you don't feel you know that you you feel you know you you take on this role almost of of challenging what needs to be challenged in the world and nadia is saying you know you you are rebellious in that you know you're prepared to challenge those issues and you know, you you said before that you didn't feel that was particularly rebellious, but it clearly is because not many people are doing that. And and I just wondered what sort of in the bigger definition of rebellion. So you know, in the context of of uh, rebels and rule breakers and rebel yell and all of the stuff that we talk about on a regular basis as a team, what does rebellion actually mean to you then? Well, I suppose rebellion will mean will mean something different to different people. And it's like, you know, when when you are someone, well, what is success? Like, uh, listen, our society and culture will tell us that, 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 that you're successful because of the car you drive, the job in which you have, how much money you've got in the bank, the clothes in which you wear and how many bedrooms your house has got. Do you know what I mean? But there are people in this world and I just need them to know that they are successful if you literally pull the duvet off of you and your feet hit the ground and you literally face the day. Like success means different stuff to different people. And I suppose that's that's with rebellion as well. So I suppose, yeah, you know, other people will see rebellion different, different to me, but I don't see myself as rebellious because at the end of the day, just because no one or not a lot of people are prepared to do what it is that I'm doing, it doesn't make it rebellious. It just shows that, pe- that how, how far we've kind of fallen because I don't look at that as anything special because I'm only questioning the basics. I'm only like I'm not questioning anything that's outlandish or extravagant. I'm I am just literally doing what I deem to be the the, the bare minimum. And if I yeah. think that it's the bare minimum to say something like this and going back to that example, listen, I'm pleased that you've been 
like, uh, uh, listen, convicted of doing something bad, but I don't want to know about you anymore. I want to know the names of your customers. That's not rebellious. Like, that's 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 standard. That's standard. So I d- I don't really know what kind of being rebellious is. I suppose like my 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 level of rebellion might be a little bit higher than 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 other people. So it takes more for me to be considered rebellious because what I kind of look at as what I'm doing is just literally the basic standing up for injustice, stand, standing up for wrong, you know, standing against wrong and the wrongdoing and standing up at what other people's perceptions of, of uh, right are if it clearly isn't right. If yeah. it clearly isn't right. But just because other people deem it to be right doesn't make it so. So we, you know, we have, um, you know, we talk a lot in, in Rebel World around the, the things that restrict us personally that we, you know, the rules and expectations that we have that we need to break free from. Um, so what what have you rebelled against or what are you, you know, sort of working on in your life to rebel against in your sort of personal uh, growth kind of sphere? What what sort of things do you want to break free from? Me me being my own worst enemy. Me being my wow. own biggest critic. That's a, that's a big one. Yeah. Because, I like I say, like that, my, my uh, kind of levels are higher. Mm-hmm. A lot of things of what I'm prepared to do and what I consider rebellion uh, to be. But then again, like I say, with pushing those boundaries, I've just said that even with stuff that's positive, there's a negative connotation to it. That, that, that you know, right, the negative fights back that even though my levels are up there, I've got a higher level of myself. I've got a higher, a higher regard for myself, like higher expectations of myself. Yeah, so no matter what it is that we do, no matter what it is that we do, we we necessarily have like a um like 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 a negative connotation to it, like a negative reaction. And how I how I kind of like explain this, or uh, the, the the best example that I can give is the stuff that I'm proud of, right? And and I know it was one of the other questions, but listen, my listen, my beautiful princess is flat out. My beautiful princess is flat out. And something that gave me like enormous pride is when we're walking through Tesco's and someone stops us, not because of me, but because of video that my eldest daughter Tilly done on a particular subject, like saying what was right and what was wrong. And a woman recognized her. And I'm like, oh. like you just absolutely because she done a little video and I posted it on my social media. And she recognised my little girl, and she and she stopped my little girl. So, like, I, this wow, is my babies make me proud, and I'm very, very proud of them. Um, you know, but it's one of those that I'm very proud that there are people that are still alive because of me and the words in which I've in which I've said. Um, because I've got many, many, many testimonies back, many, many kind of like uh, um, elements of feedback where people have said, like, listen, I was thinking about checking out, but because of you, because of your words today, they've helped me. But then in comes the negative because I just wish I was given a chance to be able, like, that's all I would have asked for, 10 minutes. 10 yeah. minutes on like May the 20th to stand yeah. in front of my sister and be given that opportunity to be able to tell her that the world needed her, that we needed her, that everybody loves her, that she has this value. Like even though she had just graduated from Goldsmiths Writing College, in like London and and she had wow. got uh, um, a contract to do script writing for the BBC and she's got four beautiful children, three, three beautiful grandchildren and a family that loved her that she was still her own worst enemy. She was her own biggest critic. So it's mm-hmm. one of those that I wish that I could have used what it was that I used three days after, after my sister taking her own life on that 22 year old single mum, that I was given that opportunity to, to do the same with my sister. So that's why I'm saying that I, I, listen, it, it, it's 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 the white wolf and, and the black wolf. You, you know, the black dog or the white dog. Which one? Which one you feed? And and there are times when my white and my black are kind of going at it, and and I can be mm-hmm. my own worst enemy. And I and I really don't look at the amazing stuff in which I've done that I true that that I look at regrets that I look at stuff that I could have done and should have done like yeah. differently or chances I wish I could have had. But then I kind of bring myself back into the flow again. And listen, I can't do anything about that. I can't do anything about it, you know. Mm-hmm. And and it's one of those things that, especially with my sister, where she took her own life, um, you know, there, there is, it's one of those suicide kind of leaves more questions than answers. And and I, I know that I have to be strong because my sister and my brother-in-law and now my mum has gone through the biggest pain 
on this planet, which is child loss, barring any, the, the bar none, the greatest pain on the planet, right? So I need to be strong for my 77 year old mom who breaks down. I can't be breaking down with my mom. I've got to be there at that particular time to be an emotional support, an emotional crux for her. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, for, for me to look after my mom, because she looked after me when I was a baby. She's looked after me during my lifetime. So now it's payback. So when yeah. when I look at this stuff, do you know what I mean? I I I just bring like this little bit of reassurance. It's not easy. It's not easy, but anything worth doing, listen, it will never ever be easy. So at that moment, like I just literally say to my mom, listen, if there's only one question that you could ask, because she will be asking and torturing herself, as we all do as human beings, we torture ourselves because we we are our own worst enemies. She's saying, well, why has she done it? What what, what you know? What was her reason? You know, her babies were here. Do you know what I mean? And the blah blah blah. And there's so much stuff. And I said, mum, the the only question that you should ask. That, that will literally cut the conversation and, and literally put everything at rest is because any other question just leads to more questions. And no matter what answer you give, it will never ever be satisfactory. It would never put you at peace. The only question that you should ask is, are you at peace now? If you had that, if you had that moment, 10 seconds to ask them a question, are you at peace now? And if they say yes, that's it. Because I could do nothing about other people's actions. I could do nothing about their behavior, what they did. It's just all about how I take the, you know, the outcome, how I take the result and use it in the best possible way that I can. But it doesn't mean to say that I have regret, that I don't have hurt, that I don't carry pain because of the action, because of the behavior. So there are times where, yeah, I, I kind of am my own worst enemy, my own biggest critic. And, um, you know, because because of the levels in which I've set myself. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that's that's something that I would love to break free from. You do have very high expectations of yourself, and when and I think you're right when you when you actually look at what you've achieved, what you've come through, and your children. And I know you're really proud of your kids. Um, you know that's the pinnacle, isn't it? As well. They're yeah, exactly. Pinnacle. And 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 it's all about what I do. Um, you, you know, and what I show. And what I show them because I'm not going to be around forever and I need to show my babies that and uh, listen for generations to come. Uh, listen, it's not a case of if these tests and trials come, but when and when yeah. they do, I just need you to know that you can overcome them, that you can literally uh, 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 listen, hit them head on and you can overcome and conquer them. Why? Because I've done it and you're listen, you've got my DNA. Like you've got half of my heart. Yeah. You've got daddy's blood running through your veins. You've got granddad's uh, uh, blood running through your veins because I am a granddad as well. Do you know what I mean? Like my son is 27 this year and I know there's not many granddads that can still rock a cap and hoodie and make it look this good. I understand. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, I've got to show my grandchildren. But I look at a bigger picture as well. And a lot of people will ask like, why is it you speak with so much power and so much authority, so much enthusiasm? It's, it's because, you know, uh, listen, I'd, 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 I'd like to put stuff out there um you know uh, that, that's that's there for people to see because there'll be a time when i'm not here and i'll want my great 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 grandchildren to know that their great 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 granddad is only the click of a button away and you can see me on what i say because what i say in that moment will still apply will still apply years down the line why because life is life humans are humans the problems the tests and the trials will always be the same it's not a case of if they come but when so it's just giving that that little bit of armor to people that little bit of hope yeah. that little bit of reassurance that you can overcome this because i can't wipe away people's people's problems but i can arm them as best i can i'm still arming myself i'm still work in progress as we all are but it's just one of those that we need to be kind of armored and prepared for when they come absolutely right well on that note, and we've we've jam packed an awful lot into that hour, um, and we've we've tipped over the hour mark. Um, there's been so so many words of wisdom in that whole thing, um, and so many quotes you could probably pull from from that. Um, but in terms of the of perhaps people who are resonating with some of the things that you're saying about, you know, the stuff that you've experienced or the things that you help um, other people particularly young people experiencing um what you know what advice what final piece of advice or worst of words of wisdom would you have for people to leave them with here well if they're going through the tests and the trials um you know it's one of those that i i need you to find something easy 
that, that you can think about at a moment's notice that will inspire you at any given moment. And like an easy one is a family member. Like I say, I listen, when I'm going through the tests and the trials, I think about my mum and I think about my sister and that grounds me. Do you know what I mean? Because there's a particular photo that I use of like my mum where she's just sitting on a bench and that 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 bench is special because a lot of people would just see an older older lady kind of like going for uh, you know sitting on a bench but i see a lady whose grandchild was was uh, um listen his, his life was taken through violence um she she went through a 50-50 operation where her intestines burst and all the poisons were going in, into her body and they said listen if you don't right if you don't have an operation in the next 24 hours you will be dead and even if you do have the operation it's 50-50 and she's yeah give me the 50-50 let's go but she's still here she was in intensive care uh 7 8 months later to do with a virus and and a uh, and her daughter took her own life and she was sitting on a bench that's dedicated to her daughter that's kind of took her own life so what excuse have i got not to carry on if she sat there on that bench holding a bunch of flowers smiling so I, I i i i need to be doing exactly the same thing so find something that will drag you through that will literally pull you out of the trenches drag you through the trenches and out the trenches again at any given moment because when we're in a problem when we're, we're in turmoil our, our our thought process becomes hazy it becomes cloudy when you're in the eye of the storm it's so hard to see the wood from the trees and you need to get something something that is boom that, that, that can just help you through that moment and you may feel like that you're battered and that you're down and that you're out um listen tyson fury showed us that you can be down and out but you can still get yourself up off of the canvas and carry on fighting in order to get what it is you want and uh, you, you know to get the reward which was him becoming world heavyweight champion but i use it as like an analogy because life can be like a like like a fight do you know what i mean like you feel like you're in a fight you feel like you're getting battered and bruised like you're getting beat up roughed up and it's sometimes where you feel like you're down on the canvas and this is the thing is in life like people that we care about can't always be there tyson fury was down on the canvas right and he had loads of people that he loved, adored and care about, like his dad, like his trainer, his coach, like the corner man was literally seven foot away. But they could not enter the ring and pull him up and get him up onto his feet. He had to do it himself. Literally, sometimes we will be on the canvas and we've just got to make that decision of whether we get up and whether we stand again in order for us to be in the fight again to literally some, some somewhere along the line because he didn't get his reward in that fight. He just got a draw in that fight and he had to have the like the next fight in order to beat Deontay Wilder to become world heavyweight champion. So we don't know when our reward has got to come, but we've just got to get up off the canvas sometimes because that's what life is does to us, knocks us down, get up onto our feet. There's not a lot of people that will help us at any given moment. We've got to do it ourselves. You're more than capable of doing it yourself. Listen, like I said, like there's so much stuff I've done on my own and I, there's nothing special about me. I'm not a superhero. I've got an S on my chest. I haven't got a cape and I certainly don't wear my pants outside. Like the <laughs> So only on a Friday night. But it's one of those <laughs> that, listen, you're capable of doing it as well. It's in you. You've just got to make that decision. But have something. Have something that will pull you through the trenches at any given moment. Something easy to recollect. Something easy to literally, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of think about and to get you back on track. But know, know that life is going to knock you about, is going to knock you down. You are going to be on the canvas sometimes and you just need to get up. In right, You don't know whether you're going to win the fight. You don't know whether you're going to get the knockout or whether life's going to knock you out in whichever way but you've got to get to your feet to find out the answer you know and and like a lot of people say yeah but what if i do get knocked out but yeah what about if you throw the knockout punch and it's you that becomes champion yeah. there's only one way to find out so yeah just know just know that because when you know something is going to happen when it does happen and it's not looking at the negative it's being realistic it's being authentic right so yeah. when you know something's going to happen when it does happen it doesn't it doesn't impact you as much so when yeah. it does happen you're prepared for it because you can't stop it from happening but just be like like i say tyson fury if you do feel like you're on the canvas sometimes get back up get in the fight have something that that's easy to recollect and something that can pull you through anything that's, it can be anyone it can be anything and the lessons in which it gives you and that there can be the difference between between make or break amazing advice jamie well that is us nearing the end of our interview 
you'll notice I've put on some snazzy music in the background because I'm like, you know, mega producer now. <laughs> but thank you so much, Jamie. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um, always, always bringing the energy that just absolutely transcends through the internet, whether, you know, whatever platform we're on but speaking of platforms those of you that are not in the rebels and rule breakers facebook group yet please come and join us to get more of this juice and more of the master rebels with who i'm going to be interviewing one by one and we also have nadia martelli's interview that we did the other week that is available on the youtube channel so please go watch that because it was absolutely amazing thank you for all your support folks thank you for everyone who's watched it live thank you if you're watching on replay Thank you for all your comments. And um, thank you very much, Jamie, as always. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Thank you. Bye, everybody.